you haven't played Counter-Strike in a while, it's easy to forget how unforgiving it can be. There's no regenerating health, and just one burst from an assault rifle or bullet from an AWP is enough to take you down. Valve's next entry in the franchise, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, isn't meant to be a huge step forward. This is not Counter-Strike 2, but instead a reworking of existing mechanics with a few tweaks made to map layouts, loadout options, and the visual style. Global Offensive will also be available on consoles, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC players will get a chance to play when the game's ready sometime in 2012, though PC players will also get a shot earlier in a beta test planned for this October. The basic gameplay in Global Offensive will be familiar to any series veteran. You split into two teams, terrorist and counter-terrorist. Depending on the map, the objectives will differ. On Dust and Aztec, the terrorists need to plant a bomb at one of two designated sites, while the counter-terrorists need to stop them. There aren't any respawns or revives, so once you die, you spectate the rest of the match. Before each round begins, you purchase weapons to determine your role. There's plenty to choose from. High-powered sniper rifles, submachine guns, and assault rifles are all available. If you survive a round and win, you keep the weapons. If you die, you lose them and have to repurchase. That's where money comes into play. Kills and wins reward you with cash, which can then be used for better and more varied gear. This includes standard explosive grenades, flashbangs and smoke, as well as a new gear item, the Molotov Cocktail. This weapon can have a significant effect on the field of play. It does damage over time to anyone standing on the flames it creates, though once you step off the fire, the damage over time stops. More than a direct damage weapon, it seems to be effective as a deterrent. Because no player is going to want to run across a carpet of fire, the Molotov seems like it could be really useful for map control and defense. Speaking of maps, Valve's made a few changes to the Dust and Aztec maps that longtime players might appreciate. The underpass area on Dust has been widened significantly, and a new stairwell leading up from the underpass serves as a great exit point for terrorists who would previously have been pinned down by counter-terrorist snipers. Other returning maps, like Dust 2, have barely been touched aside from the new visual style, and fans can expect to see Nuke, Inferno, and Italy in the game when it launches. There's more in store too, but Valve isn't discussing it quite yet. When setting up games, Global Offensive will include a matchmaking system that drops you into 5-on-5 five -five fights. You'll have a skill ranking, so ideally you'll be shooting players of appropriate skill levels, and bots of corresponding difficulties will be subbed in when human opponents aren't available. For anyone who finds 5-on-5 five -five matches to be too restrictive, custom games can be set up on PC, though console players won't have this ability. With more weapons to play around with, like the stun gun, and a few other minor changes made to the gameplay, Global Offensive manages to differentiate itself just enough from previous Counter-Strikes to stand out. Even with changes, this still feels very much like Counter-Strike. Fast, punishing, and a lot of fun. For more details on Global Offensive, head over to IGN.com.